Welcome to today's watercolor gathering entitled Under the Window. It's part of a series of paintings I did um, featuring the, the roses of Cape Cod. So let's get started. With this painting, uh, we first of all did an, um, we, after we finished the drawing, because that's very important, but we first did an underpainting of all of the rose bushes. Um, and later in this um, video, there's the original that I painted um, some years ago. This one is the, the, my original painting that I did as a demonstration in my watercolor gathering recently. So you had to lay like a light green, yellowy green um, base for the, the um, base of the roses. Um, and then you had to let that dry. And then, um, as you can see, the window was reflecting the roses. And then a little bit higher up, it was reflecting the sky. Um, so uh, if it wasn't touching the green underpainting of the roses, you could just paint those in um, very pale green wash color. Um, it can be uneven, that would be fine. And then um, I didn't complete that in this, but a little bit green just above the middle of that window. And then above that, it was reflecting the sky. So a very pale blue wash. And again, you don't want this perfect because um, reflections are just not perfect. So now I'm going to demonstrate uh, painting in the lines or the bases of the clapboards. Um, I'm turning my pad and I'm using a straight edge to start off with so that you know you can use a straight edge of some kind and um, paint along if you're not sure of being able to paint a straight line or a straight enough line. So um, it's quite easy to do um, that with a piece of another piece of watercolor paper or a piece of cardstock. And as you can see, I've got my paintbrush loaded with um, a mixture of Payne's Gray, and um, I I'm using uh, some ultramarine blue in this as well. I'm just cleaning up that line. Sometimes when you're using a straight edge, it does um, get a little wobbly as well. But then watercolors are, are not perfect. So once the clapboards are done, I'm going to move to defining the edges of the window itself, the window frame. To um, And you define that by using the shadows. So the light is actually coming from the right on this painting. So down the um, left-hand facing side of the window or the right-hand side of the window, I just fill in some shadow between the edge of the frame and the clapboards. And as you can see, it's a little wider at the top of each clapboard. Then on the inside of the window frame on the other side. And then underneath the window frame at the top. And then um, just adding a little bit more underneath the middle of the um, window. And cleaning up the edges. And then I'm going to move to that top part of the frame and put in the shadow underneath that trim at the top. And 
and wash it out so that it doesn't have too much of a hard line. And now I'm using the side of uh, my rigger brush to pick up the hills on the paper to um, add some detail to show that the paint is chipping on this crab oak. I'm just randomly putting in some. You don't want too much, otherwise it'll look like all the paint's falling off. Um, but uh, give, give the idea that the paint is chipping and old. And I'm moving back to the roses. Um, what I did was layered um, some darker green, um, probably three or four layers on here. Now I'm just adding some detail with leaves that are going into um, or over the clapboards just to add some detail there to make it look a little bit more realistic. And also adding some shadows underneath the roses um, that kind of grounds them in the bush and um, helps to um, identify them and have some shadows underneath them. And there's always some dark shadows in trees and, and bushes um, and such. So you have to learn to see them when you're looking at shrubbery and plants and trees. So, and this is a mixture of um, Hooker's Green Light and Payne's Grey. Here's some close-ups of the painting so you can see some of the detail better. The uh, peeling paint and the reflections in the window and then the roses. Here's the original painting which I painted probably 10 years ago and this is about 16 by 20, the original itself. Um, and you can see that the colors I used in this were much lighter and I had many more um, roses in that image um, but then I had more time to um, paint the roses um, at my own leisure. When you're painting in a watercolor workshop you have to be quick about it so some things get missed. So anyway I hope you enjoyed this, thanks. Thank you for joining me today. Hope you enjoyed this demonstration. I also do virtual watercolor gatherings um, also on a monthly basis. And I also have some other demonstrations for sale on my website. So go and see me at janemayjones.com or at magicalearthwomen.com. But you know what to do. Subscribe to my channel now so you get updates from me regularly. Thanks and have a lovely day.